to impact a city, to impact people, you need the movement of God. Bless is really, what it's doing is, it's giving you some pragmatic ways to open yourself up to letting God move in your life, to blessing and caring for others, which is really one of the core things. Bless is important to know and practice because it gives us a identity together at Grace Community Church. So we are a body, part of a bigger body. There are smaller bodies like community groups and Bible studies within us, but it gives us a thing to rally around instead of going in any number of different directions because people are passionate about different things and they all still go to Grace and that's good. And BLESS covers every little sphere of possible ministry and so that's why bless knowing and practicing is so important because we have to remember who god called us to be and the identity that grace church is calling its congregation to rally around we begin with prayer to remind ourselves of where the focus has to be and where the power has to be from you can be very eloquent you can have a plan but if the Holy Spirit is not involved in the midst of that, your plans will not be successful or they'll be superficial or less than what they could be. So reminding ourselves and seeking direction from the Spirit, what are we supposed to do? Uh, how are we supposed to do this? Not just to launch out. I want to be prepared and I want the Spirit to be there to remind me that this is about Him and not about us. You have to depend on God for this. There's no substitute for it. Trying to copy someone else's style is not going to work. Trying to uh, create something out, out of your own understanding is, is, is not going to work. We still have to depend on provisions that He gives us. I think beginning conversations with the lost or community group or meetings and really just giving that to God and asking God to speak, He does. And I'm always disappointed when I try to pull things off out of my skill set. It can be easy to put the pressure and the weight of evangelism on yourself. Many times we are living our lives and functioning our lives sort of with the sense that I need to do this. I need to save people. I need to be a witness. Me, 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 me. And so even though we don't mean to, we have slipped into a false gospel. And so beginning with prayer, I think, first of all, should be a gut check for us. It should be a place of, do we understand that it is Christ alone for salvation and it is Christ who saves? But secondly then, if we truly believe that it is Christ who saves, what's more critical than prayer? <laughs> if the Spirit and Christ and God is moving in people, then prayer is actually the critical piece. Too often I'm thinking about, okay, what do I need to say to really make this work? What smart thing am I going to say? What verse? What can I do to convince this person that they need Jesus? I don't know what God is doing in their heart or where he has them. A lot of times I just need to obey and just share truth. And so I think it's just obedience to where's God calling you? Do you really have a heart for lost people? I get that it's scary. I just think so is a lot of things. And I think that when you just take a step, you'll be surprised at how that, how that goes. It's got to begin with prayer because that's the way God reminds us that it's about Him and not about us. It's about His power, not our power. It's about His eloquence in manipulating things, not about how clever or eloquent I am. God is already at work in people. And so as we pray for them, His work has already begun. And if we're writing ourselves into this place of, instead of us manufacturing these things on our own, if we get into this habit of, God, what work are you doing? How do I join that work? How do I come alongside of what you're already doing and serve the purposes that you have? It's a very different story. 